Welcome back. This is Chris and my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome. And uh, so just some uh, some kudos for my brother, Stephen. I mean, without his input and he, you know, it's like a lot of times people to see this, this talking head, but remember that there's people behind this that make this happen. So it's basically two guys, remember, and two or more are gathered together in the name of Christ. And a sister that has some technical experience allows these to get uploaded. So praise God. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, we're, the Bible. we're talking of the date today is April the 2nd, year of our Savior, 2018. And the title of this uh, lesson is going to be Jesus Christ part two mm. yes jesus christ part two so we don't go by any counterfeits we're not going to yiddish or anything else we're going to go by the name of christ now a lot of times people will go and want to go to all these sacred name but the sacred namers can't agree on the true name of god and remember that god is not the author of confusion that's right it's very simple as we mentioned in what Hebrews 8 verse 11 that neither uh, even the greatest to the to the to the least are going to know the creator of heaven and earth and God came down to redeem us from our fallen nature because of what happened in the garden of eden right so folks Remember I was talking about those two guys that were tired, trying to explain because they're, they're, they're not armchair the theologians because they went to seminary, or shall I call it semen or seminary? It means Truth. the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. Truth. Verify it in your collegiate dictionary. And he's trying to explain that for somehow, I mean, the shape of this, this is a plate, all right? It is a, can they see this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a what? Is it a sphere? Is it a ball? Or is it a circle? It's a circle. Hey, the Hebrews knew the difference between a circle and a ball. This is a ball. You know, so what I'm saying is that you have people that are very educated, but forest for the trees, ladies and gentlemen. They can't see the forest for the trees, but... Somebody who just active, is activated by faith in God's Word can grasp these concepts. Go ahead, my brother. 1 Corinthians 14, For God is not the author of confusion, Amen. but of peace. Well, since you're in Corinthians, why don't you read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Because this is about Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross for us. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, Amen. if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen. So we're seeing here that Jesus Christ, by the death of Jesus Christ, it was by necessity made a change in the law. And things were activated that were not activated before. See, if you remember from Genesis to Malachi, there's over 300 prophecies of the coming of the Messiah. God is with us, and His name is Jesus the Christ. That's His name, Jesus the Christ. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you don't have to study at the temples at Jerusalem. You don't have to put a Saturn's cube or a Satan's cube on your forehead. You do not have to understand or learn Hebrew, whatever that is, because people are saying that's Hebrew. Folks, I don't know what Hebrew is. Yeah. Except in Biblical English, and there's a book called Hebrews, the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, and I can learn all about Hebrewism in Biblical English without ever going outside the 66 books of the Bible. That's very powerful. So, 
I know that the Hebrew sound of the name of God is a J sound. Satan has a counterfeit sound of Y. Yah versus J. Very important to understand, ladies and gentlemen. Now, a lot of times people go, well, you, you're just, you're not, you're not enlightened. You're not educated. Well, hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen. You didn't go to seminary or seminary. Well, if you go back to Hebrews 8, what, verse, what was it, 11? Hebrews 8, verse 11, the cross reference, whoa, the cross reference is in the Old Testament. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Yeah, well, well, does it say that you have to go to semin or seminary to know the Lord Jesus Christ, to study his word, to preach his word, to preach Jesus Christ? And that's a cross-reference verbatim of Jeremiah 31, verse 34. So that's how we study God's Word. It is interconnected. It is interconnected, ladies and gentlemen. That's important to understand. So when He came and died for my sins and yours, if you accept the free gift, by necessity, the death of the testator, Go ahead, my brother. In Jeremiah 31, 34, And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, I will remember their sin no more. So what is he doing? He's testing me. He's verifying what I'm saying, because sometimes it's not about me and how smart I am and how I know the Scriptures. I'm using the Word of God as a weapon as a sword. I've written f over 300 prophecies in my Bible, so when I open it up, it refers me back and forth. That's a powerful weapon, ladies and gentlemen. And you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and you preach the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom, which is salvation. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you're so big into the name of God, why aren't you focusing in the Greek? Because the New Testament is written in Greek. Right? Right? But these Luciferian lexicons, what do they say? They emit out of their own mouth that we really don't know what biblical Greek is. And they admit that they've changed the meanings of words. Yeah, yeah. And so, well, let's go to Homer. Let's go to homosexual philosophers to define God's word. No, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to let the Bible interpret itself. Amen. That's right. I'm not going to go to Strong's. I'm not going to say that Isaiah 14.12 is the morning star. I'm not going to say that Isaiah 14.12 is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is found in Revelation 22 verse 16. I'm not going to omit Acts 8.37. Yes, we're not going to omit Acts 8.37 by these wicked, apostate, counterfeit Bibles. So... Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, imagine this concept 20 years ago. If some, some person skilled in the Word of God would have given me an idea, would have said, Chris, God has inspired and preserved His Word, and here it is. Believe it and elevate it above everything else. May I also submit <clears throat> that Every question you have pertaining to the Bible, the answer is in the Bible. Amen. Amen. So, uh, you know, and, and I, was, I was having a conversation with my brother Stephen, and I'm like, you know, it's so sad that I want to talk about God's Word. I want to talk about it with all my being. And, and that's why on YouTube, what is it? Um, our, our, our call sign is Christianity 201 Moonlight. Moonlight. You know why? Because 99% of Christians will not believe Genesis 1, verse 16. Right. They won't believe it. Because... Then God made two great lights. The two. greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. It's so simple, ladies and gentlemen. The greatest geocentric book, the greatest book ever, the most popular book ever in recorded history. It's a geocentric flat earth book. Well, pillars. <clears throat> and so, 
So that's our foundation. All right. So let's get into the Word of God. Uh, how about Psalm 40, verse 7? Psalm 40, verse 7. I'm going to go to Revelation 19, 10. Okay. Psalm 40, verse 7 says, Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. Amen. Isn't that, that's referring to God it is written of him in this volume. Isn't that amazing? It's about the salvation of Jesus Christ. Now we're looking at Revelation 19 verse 10. It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of what? The testimony of Jesus the testimony of Jesus, as mentioned the first time in Matthew 1, verse, I don't know, 16. Um, uh, Jesus, worship God for the testimony yes. of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Wow. Yeah. And then we could go into Acts and 1 John 5. I mean, we can go all over but I'm trying to start at the beginning. Where do you begin this journey? Remember, we're talking about the first prophecy of Jesus Christ was found in where? Genesis. Genesis 3, verse 15. Now, we're looking at, uh, how about Genesis 5, verse 24? Genesis 5, verse 24. Verse 5, verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Isn't that amazing? But did you know that's a reference? A, a, a shadow of the substance to come? Because in Mark, in Mark 16, verse 19, it states, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. See, See, Enoch was a shadow or a representation of the coming of the Messiah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus omit Mark, what, 10? Mark chapter 16, 10 through 20. I wonder why. But let's get back into the Word of God. Another reference would be Revelation 12, verse 5. Revelation 12, verse 5. We're beginning the journey of over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about the coming of the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Amen. And that's what's going to happen at what? His first advent? No. His, you know, it's going to be a second coming. His second advent or second coming, not a one and a half or three or four or whatever. He's going to come the second time and he's going to rule the world with a rod of iron. Right. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. All right, so let's move forward. How about Genesis 9, verse 26 and 27? And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. The God of Shem will be the son of Shem, will it not? Will it not the God of Shem, will not the God of Shem be the son of Shem? Because Jesus Christ came from this line. He is a descendant of Shem. And people are like, oh, you're anti-Semitic, you're anti-Shemite, Shemite. Go back one verse. Go ahead, brother. And says, and he said, cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, he shall be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant, right. and God shall enlarge Japheth. Yeah. So Jesus Christ was going to come from the line of Shem, which was from the line of Adam, because remember, Adam was the first man, and Jesus Christ was the second Adam. He was the second man. 
Um, so we see here in reference to that, a cross-reference in the New Testament is going to be Luke 3, 23 through 36. Wow. And it's talking about his genealogy. Jesus himself to began about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Matthat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was, and it goes on and on and on, all the way down to verse 36 of Luke chapter 3. And it says, which was the son of Cainim, Ka which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sem, or Shem. That's where you get Sem, which would be Semite. Did you know that Jesus Christ was a Semite? Did you know that Jesus Christ was Adam? And Jesus Christ condemned the Pharisees, which means he condemned and said, you're of the synagogue of Satan. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, you got this guy going, man, I've gone to Jerusalem to study Hebrewism. The Jews of Christ's time did not know the scriptures. Well, what do you mean? They went to seminary. Jesus was saying, if you knew of God of the Old Testament, you would know of me because I came from him. Right. We can get into John chapter 8 and walk it piece by piece by piece. We're starting to start at the very beginning about the prophecies of Jesus Christ. We're only in Genesis, ladies and gentlemen. But he condemned Phariseeism, did he not? That's right. So, very, very important. Very important to understand that Jesus Christ was the son of Shem, as mentioned in Genesis 5, verse 32. And scrolling down to Luke 3, verse 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1. I wonder what Genesis chapter 5, verse 1. I think it's the generations of Adam, is it not? I believe it's <clears throat> going to say right here, 5, 1 says, one page over, here we go. This book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Yeah, the generations of Adam. I'm just reading the generations of Adam of the coming of the Messiah you know, the first Adam was made a, a what was it, um, flesh, and the second Adam was made a quickening spirit. I'm paraphrasing here, right. ladies and gentlemen. Search the scriptures. This isn't about how smart I am. It's about the Holy Spirit coming in and me proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. But this is the this is Jesus Christ is the second Adam. That's why we have the Old Testament and we have the New Testament, and that's why we say Jesus Christ. And so many people are offended or do not want to use the name of Jesus. They would rather lean on Yiddish, Kabbalistic, Satanic counterfeit. But you know why? Because we're in a Laodicean time. Because we've been convinced that God is not sovereign enough to preserve His Word in Biblical English. Well, what if it's not... In Folks, I'm speaking English. I don't know about the other languages, but this is the seventh purification of God's Word. Go ahead, my brother. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When that gets to the point where you can't comprehend that, maybe we need a new Bible. But until then, Amen. the King James Bible works just fine. Amen. Proclaiming salvation. That's powerful. So as we move forward, what about uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3? Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. It's talking about the seed of Abraham. What? The seed of Abraham is going to yeah. do what? And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee Whoa. shall all families of the earth be blessed. All right. So, oh, oh, so those who, well, let's read that again. It's talking about blessings and cursings. 
Well, I'll go to verse 2. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, what, what, how are all the nations and families of the earth, how are all these families going to be blessed? By some type of bloodline of men? <laughs> That are going to have some, do some pious act? Military intervention? Yeah, or is it, let me see. Oh, you guessed it. Jesus Christ. All nations, all families are going to be blessed through him. And you go, well, no, no, no. It's this small little psyop that, you know, these Hasidic Jews and all their all their Satanists in the synagogue of Satan. No, 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 no. That's not what the scriptures say. All nations, all families are going to be blessed through knowing the Messiah. And you're, if you know the Messiah, guess what? You're Semitic, are you not? You're Sem. As we just talked about, Jesus Christ came from Sem. Actually, Jesus Christ came from Adam. Right, so let's go and confirm this in Galatians 3, verse 8. Isn't that fascinating? Galatians 3, verse 8. And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Hey, man, isn't that amazing? Hey, but let's cross-reference again. From where? Do we need to go outside the Bible? No. All right, let's... Hey, I got an idea. Let's go back into the Bible and study His Word. How about in Acts 3, verse 25 and 26? Wow! Ye are the children of the prophets... And of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. Was it, whoa, 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 wasn't that back in Genesis? Yes. Word for word, was it not? Pretty close, yes. wasn't it? Are you saying that the Bible is a supernatural owner's manual mm -hmm. for this world? Yes. I'm saying the terrestrial is for the terrestrial, but I'm saying, I mean, the celestial is for the celestial, but I'm saying the terrestrial is for the terrestrial. Remember, there's only heaven and earth, if you believe. That's right. That's right. But how many Christians are even going to believe Genesis 1, verse 16? No, there's only one light, and it's reflection. Uh, you know, no, no, no. There's two great lights, ladies and gentlemen. A child can understand it. Mm-hmm. So as we're talking about this, we see in Galatians, now in verse, no, Acts 3, right? Yep. Verse 25, and then we'll also have verse 26. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Amen. Amen. So we see his son, Yahushua. No. Jesus. Jesus. It's real simple. Really simple, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. But we're gonna lay out at the same time, and we've had subconsciously doubt programmed in us. We don't need to go anywhere else, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. All right? And there are books that confirm his story. There are books that confirm his story. All right. So we see here, yeah, his son Jesus. He was sent to bless you and turning away every one of you from his inequities. That is what has come from the loins of Abraham to bless all kindreds, all nations of the earth. Now, it's really interesting, another cross-reference, because the Bible starts cross-referencing. It starts popping. Romans 9, verse 4. Romans 9, verse 4 says, Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises? Who are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, 
God bless forever. Amen. Amen and amen. That's Jesus Christ. He came to die for our sins. That's right. And it is a free gift. That's what it is. So let's accept the free gift and let's take on the armor of God. Because that's what we need, ladies and gentlemen. We need the armor of God. Yes. Because there is so much wickedness going on, ladies and gentlemen, with the use of technology bringing forth. There's so much occult, witchcraft, Satanism. We're in World War III right now, ladies and gentlemen. It's a battle of the soul. Yeah. The battle of the temple. Yeah, the temple made with hands and in Jerusalem. Stop. The temple. The temple. Where is the temple? The well, I believe i got to go back to the Old Testament in the Levite priesthood and I'm keeping the... Where's the temple? Well, it's this building made with hands or is it our bodies? Yeah. It's our bodies. That's where the temple resides. So wherever his church is, wherever we are, that's his church. We're little stones, ladies and gentlemen. But we can stand up and bind this iron kingdom in the name and the power and the glory and the majesty of Jesus the Christ. How much time we got? We have one minute. <laughs> wow. You're doing good. We're not even out of Genesis, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we have Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. It goes on and on. Specifically, Isaiah. Wow. The, I mean, we could spend we could spend a lot of time in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Wow. But all this is about the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And by necessity, there's been made a change in the law. So that's powerful. Just remember, ladies and gentlemen, that the scriptures cannot be destroyed. As mentioned in John, what, 10, verse 35, the scriptures cannot be destroyed. That's what it says. I don't know how much time we have, but I'm going to say... You have yes. 30 seconds. All right, all right. John, John 10, verse 35 is going to say, yes... In he, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. Can't break it, ladies and gentlemen. Come to Christ. God bless you. Praise God. Thank you.